Coming up next on City Corner, we talk to an organization that is working to help young people become positive influences in their community. Please join us. Welcome to City Corner. I'm your host, Melanie Adams. Today, we're talking with Sonia Brascom and Joshua Randall, representatives of the Kwame Foundation. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Well, let's start with you, Sonia. <clears throat> Tell me a little bit about the Kwame Foundation. Well, the Kwame Foundation was started by my older brother, Anthony Thompson, um, nine years ago. Okay. And it was to help uh, students going to college. He wanted to help the ones that not able to afford it, mm -hmm. minorities especially. So he started uh, a golf tournament where we okay. raise money and uh, we support all those local colleges. Right. And most of, um, where else we go? I'm sorry, uh, HBCUs. Mm -hmm. And we raise approximately 120000 a year. And all the money we raise goes straight to the scholarships to help first um, first generation mm -hmm. minorities uh, we did he just wanted to give back he's a real advocate for education and he wants to make sure everyone has an opportunity to go to college right well and and I think chance. that's wonderful I think you know from <coughs> what I know about um, your brother and the Kwame Foundation they are really heavy into education and think very. that that's very important um, and I know one of the programs, I remember learning a little bit about the Dunbar program, but another program you do really deals with Carnahan High School, and it's a gentleman's club. Yes. I had the opportunity to go to their graduation, and I asked about the wonderful suits that you bought, but I know that's not all you do for <laughs> them. <laughs> so, if Josh, if you could tell us a little bit about the gentleman's club. Sure. Uh, the gentleman's club was started probably about five years ago. Last year's uh, graduating class, a senior class, we started with them as freshmen, mm -hmm. and the idea was uh, for a group of young African American men to have the opportunity to have positive role model experiences with a group of African, uh, older African American men. So, uh, at the time when we, when the program was started, there were ten African American uh, men from Kwame Building Group who okay. went over uh, once every other week and mentored with this group of young young men. And uh, it truly is a mentorship program. It's not a tutoring program. We're not there to help them with their math and their reading. Right. It's an opportunity for them to, uh, to see African-American men in a positive light. Uh, and, and also an opportunity for them, you know, I, I tell everyone that just as much as we've taught them, they've taught us. Uh, an opportunity for us to interact with them. Uh, many times we'll have, uh, we'll have sessions where uh, you know, we go into our room, we lock the door behind us, and, and it's fair game. And right. it, everything goes. And so it gives an opportunity to, uh, to express themselves to us and an opportunity for us to give them positive feedback as well. So all the young men at Carnahan are eligible to participate in the program. It's not a selection process or you only take 10 or 20 or? It is a, uh, it's funny, it's, it is a selection okay. process, but it's a, uh, it's a self-selection process. Mm. So uh, the group uh, recruits or, or invites people, our young men within the, the Carnahan community mm -hmm. that, uh, that have demonstrated leadership. And okay. so, and it's not uh, teachers or it's not the principal that are select, self-selecting. These are the young men themselves pulling from their own uh, young, you know, other young men who have just demonstrated leadership and, uh, and the opportunity to, to benefit from the program. So it's an honor for them to be involved in it this is. program. It is. You know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of young folks, a lot of the young men uh, have come into the program, say, junior year, sophomore year, junior year, who didn't have the opportunity as freshmen. They weren't, oh, okay. they weren't part of the self-selection self process. So it gave them something to strive for later on in their, as they continue their, their high school education. And uh, as you said, it's an honor to be selected. Well, and Sonia, I think probably one of the questions you get about this program is, well, why can't women be involved? What about the young ladies in the high school? Well, we did have had different programs and we worked with women. But there are a lot of programs out there. Right. There's not a lot of programs out there for our young men to keep mm -hmm. them off the street, to give them the, the drive they need to 
better themselves to make a difference in their community. So we wanted to focus on them. You know, the young ladies, we, we will, and right. we still help them. You know, we're not going to turn anyone away. Right. But our, our young men and African-American men are having so much problems today. Right. They need a lot of help, and they need to see the positive role models that are out there. We know there are some out there. Right. You know, everyone looks up to rappers and uh, athletes. Right. But there's people right in your own neighborhood for you to look up to who they didn't have a chance like you don't. Right. But they're trying to give you a chance to help make it. Right. Well, Josh, you mentioned that um, a lot of the mentors learn just as much as the mentees during this program. What do you think are some of the things that were aha moments for you um, dealing with um, the young men that you were just like, wow, I'm shocked that you guys are talking about this or you deal with this at this age? You know, there's, there's a, I can't pick anything in particular, but just as we talk through um, life situations that, that these young men are facing on a daily basis, you know, I remember having a conversation with a group and uh, their comment to me was that, you know, their parents are telling them that, they're, that they as the young men aren't going through anything that, they hadn't go that their parents hadn't gone through. And, you know, as I li listen to the stories of these young people that, you know, I can't agree with that. Right. The, you know, the, the young people today are facing some, right. some, some tough times. And I, I think uh, tough times that haven't been faced by any generation pr prior to us. And, you know, it's, if tough times due to economic situations, uh, tough times or challenges due to uh, peer pressure, challenges due to uh, accessibility to information and technology, which, you know, it's a pro, but it can also be a con. And so, you know, the opportunity for us to talk through, I mean, myself, I have an eight-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son. And so to get some insight into what <laughs> these young people are going to be, right. my young people are going to be facing as they, as they grow, you know, it's been, like I said, it's been an educational opportunity for me as well. Right. Well, I think, again, as I mentioned, I was able to attend the Carnahan graduation. And it is powerful to see the young African-American men in these wonderful suits. And they were mm -hmm. so proud to be in them, you can yes. tell. Um, so could you talk a little bit about the importance of that? Because some people feel that could be superficial. Oh, well, what's the big deal about a suit? But I think they don't see the underlying right. reason behind that. So right. if you could talk a little bit about why you felt it was important to get them suits for graduation. Yeah, and you know, th to be honest with you, the suit was, it was, it was an award. I mean, oh, it was okay. a reward. Yeah. It was oh, a reward okay. for, uh, for this particular group for the four graduate. years of, of oh. um, you know, their, their four working. years through yeah. the program and them giving to us. Uh, you know, the only mm -hmm. thing that we ask uh, from them is they give us an hour a, day, uh, an hour a week. Right. Uh, in exchange, they give us an hour a week, they give us their full attention. And then we ask them to go back out into their greater Carnahan community and be positive, be positive role models for the folks who aren't in the Gentleman's Club. Right. And so these young men, like I said, they'd given us four years. They had been at every session for four years. And so it felt, you know, it was the, the, the suit was a reflection of the growth that we thought that right. we had seen in them in that four years in the program. <clears throat> right. So. Well, and one of the things I know, Sonia, you talked a lot about the scholarships that the foundation provides oh, both yes. in the state of Missouri and you're even branching out to schools yeah. out of state. Mm -hmm. I guess when you first started working with the young men and with um, students in the schools, did any of them even think about going to college? Was that so far removed that you were talking a foreign language to mm -hmm. them? Well, as freshmen, you yeah. know, they weren't looking that far ahead. Right. You know, uh, I think when Josh and them started, like he said, they all were freshmen. Right. So yeah, they just, they wanted to complete high school. Right. All right. That's, that's what we try to do now. College, that's far, that's okay. not, that's away from us, you know, but right. Tony wanted to give them an opportunity. Hey, you know, we got these scholarships. I think we have over 15 scholarships oh, okay. that we uh, reward, uh, award people. And the kids, um, once they started meeting with the mentor, you mm -hmm. know, their mentors, mm -hmm. they, they seen how important, you know, education was and what they had to do to get to the next level. And they would even help them if you got, if you need help filling out your financial aid, right. looking for scholarships these guys would even help them do that. So it was just letting them know the importance and we're going to even help you. This is where you can start right. to even try to get this money. Right. You know, we're not going to send you out there and say, hey, go to college. Right. Start here, look here, right. and we help them. And now, once since you have this group that's graduated, do you plan to follow them on, Josh, or is there a program in place to help them once they're in college? You know, there's not, a, not necessarily a formal program, right. but as you can imagine, you know, we've developed relationship with these young men over these over the past four or five years. Right. And so 
probably on a monthly basis we get together with the group uh, of young men who are still here locally. There's some who have gone off to college at right. you know Mizzou and some other some other places, but there is a group that's here local, and about once a month we get together and, and have lunch with them, and then over the holiday season uh, when everybody was home, we all got together and. You know, just to, to touch base, to let them know that we are still here for them, you know, despite the fact that they are no right. longer in the Gentleman's right. Club. You know, we're still here as a resource for them. We're still here as a sounding board for them. Uh, and I think they appreciate that. Well, and I would think the young men who are currently at Carnahan can now look up to these graduates and graduates of the Gentleman's yeah. Program mm -hmm. and said, well, they did it. I can do it, too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, you know, I, the, the other thing. We, we kind of we talked about the whole mentorship aspect of it, but you know some of the things that we do while we're in session. One of the things that I think is, that's exciting that we've done while we're in session is we take the group uh, and break them up into four teams, mm -hmm. and we have a business plan yeah, competition. Okay. Um, so they come up with the idea, and it, it allows us to teach them a couple of things. We teach them you know organizational skills. We teach right. them about entrepreneurship. We teach them about uh, business basics. So they they come up with an idea. They put together the business plan. We have a business plan competition. Uh, and then this past year, the group that won the business plan competition mm -hmm. uh, got the opportunity to get funding from Kwame Building Group to actually start oh. the business. Now, what was the business? Which group won? It was a uh, it was a, a canine training, a dog training business. Oh, okay. um, yeah. There's a there was a, a young man who had a passion for training dogs and not you know sit stand that kind of stuff. He was. Uh, training guard dogs, training. He, he, he had the opportunity to get into a program where he learned to train uh, drug sniffing dogs. And oh, so okay. this is, you know, this is a serious, is a right, serious business. <laughs> business. And so that group won the business plan competition and got some funding to, you know, to best seed funding for the business. So. Right. Well, pretty exciting think, stuff. Right. That's a perfect example of what you're trying to do with these young men mm -hmm. in the Gentleman's Club. And I'm sure that um, other districts, other schools are kind of begging you to come and do a similar program yeah. um, for, mm -hmm. them, for them there. But we're very happy to have you in St. Louis Public Schools, as is Carnahan. And coming up next on City Corner, we'll talk more about the new Tyrone Thompson Institute for Nonviolence. Please stay tuned. Welcome back to City Corner. Today, we're talking with Kwame Foundation about the wonderful work they do for children in the St. Louis Public Schools. Joining me is Sonia Brascom, and recently joining me is Marvin Eccles, who is with Dunbar Elementary. Welcome. Well, before the break, we talked a little bit about the program you did um, at Carnahan High School, but I know recently you've opened a new center in conjunction with the public schools and with the community college. Right. So could you tell me a little bit about the new center? Um, the new center is called the Tyrone Thompson Institute for Nonviolence. Mm -hmm. um, about a year ago, my brother was killed, and he has dedicated his life to working with young men and youth, uh, you know, making them positive role models, trying to keep them out of trouble, right. teaching nonviolence. And it's just ironic how his life ended. So my mother, uh, and she's Honorable Betty Thompson, and she wanted to start some, uh, a program in his name to, and to honor him, you know, so his death wouldn't be in vain. So we came up with the Tyrone Thompson Institute. Um, and it's, going to start with the public school and it's going to be teaching nonviolence to elementary school students. And I think that's one of the things I found really interesting because you're going to be working with students who have been suspended, short-term suspensions from the St. Louis Public Schools, and immediately most people think of high schoolers. Right. But um, I think as um, Marvin can tell us that that's not always the case. Over at Dunbar Elementary, you do end up with some elementary school kids who are in that situation. Right. <clears throat> well, over at Dunbar, like I said, it starts in the elementary level. You have kids that have um, all kind of different behavior problems that um, where it's fighting, uh, not following directions, oppositional defiant. So it starts early and that's one of the reasons we wanted to start this program in an elementary school. Right. 
Well, and I think um, you, Kwame Construction has a great, or Kwame Building Group has a great relationship with Dunbar Elementary. I think this mm -hmm. program, something very similar almost eight years ago. Eight, eight, eight years mm -hmm. ago it started, uh, my brother started this program with Marvin. Oh, okay. So <laughs> Marvin is the one that piloted this program, so he can... Right. Like, I think we have a picture of your brother up on the screen there with a few kids from Dunbar Elementary. That's, yeah, that's uh, eight years ago oh. when he first started this with uh, Darlene Bosley, who was okay, principal, principal at, at that time. time. Okay. And um, Marvin knows exactly how they put this program together yeah, right. and things that they did. Mm -hmm. And I think we had a few images. Um, one of the things you say that you have a golf tournament because that helps fund these types of programs for the public schools. Well, honestly, our golf tournament it strictly funds our scholarships. scholarships. Okay. Everything that we get from our golf tournament goes back out for scholarships. scholarships. Okay. The, the money uh, for this funding is a lot of volunteer work. Oh, okay. Yeah, we the reason we partnered with St. Louis Public School and uh, the St. Louis Community College is because the the components were already there to make this a uh, to make this a positive. A program right. for the young people. The St. Louis Community College has a program called African American Men Initiative, right. and it's like have, have maybe 190 uh, young men who attend school, and they're out to being mentors. So that that supplied us with the manpower that we needed to be in the classroom, and they are also developing a program for parent right. uh, parent right. classes. So when the parent when we get the students, the parent has to go through. Well, we not have to, but right. we want the parents to go through a program mm -hmm. so that we can stop this repeating. You know, right. maybe the parents need help. Right. Maybe they don't know what to do to stop their child from acting out. Right. So this would help them. And of course, the St. Louis Public School had the students right. that Correct. were getting suspended. So it's a natural And they have the location for us to house them. Because if the students are, aren't in school, the school system loses money. Right. So this way, we ha we're helping the school save their money off that child from being at home. Plus, that child won't be at home just being unsupervised. You know, parents right. don't have to take off work. Correct. We're trying to help everyone, trying right. to just help the community doing this. Well, how have you seen um, this program? How do you see this program helping the Dunbar community specifically and the kids that you work with? Well, it'll help the kids that I work with. Instead of them being suspended, they'll be in school. And one of the things also with the program has it had a component where we did professional development with oh, teachers. Okay. So when the kids would come to end school, if you don't, uh, the teacher doesn't have classroom management, what would happen is they would come back to in school suspension. Right. So we did professional development with the teacher to make sure they knew how to handle the kids in the classroom. And we also, like Sonia said, had the component where we work with the parents. A lot of times parents are frustrated and they don't know what to right. do. So we want to make sure if we're the professionals, we have access to the resources. We want to make sure we help parents with different kind of parenting techniques. Now, what types of things go on in in-school suspension? So I guess a lot of people may not be familiar. You've suspended a child for three to five days. They go to this institute. What will their day look like? Well, you, well Marvin, you want to? Sure. Um, well, the first thing that happens is their work will follow them so they won't miss any assignments. The teacher okay. will send their work down and they'll stay on task. Um, they will not go to any ancillary classes, so it'll be no gym. gym. They eat lunch right. Right. in there. You know, we'll escort them to the bathroom. But they'll be with us the whole day, and all of their work will be down, too. Okay. And we also will have uh, leaders throughout St. Louis area come in to uh, have lunch with them, to okay. talk to them. You know, just like what we're doing at Carnahan. Right. Right. We will have mentors where the African-American men um, uh, from the St. Louis Community College would be used as mentors. And we also will have some of our uh, gentlemen's club you know, come in to help mentor. Because, you know, kids like it when you're not, they're closer to their age. Correct. You know, they're, they're more to listen to them, you right. know, and see, understand them more. So we will um, have those come in. And we're going to teach nonviolence training through um, the King Center in Atlanta. They have a group here, uh, and they will be training our guys. So we will be teaching conflict resolution, you know, trying to stop the repeat offenders. You know, we want to give them some redirection. Right. And I think that's really what is unique about the program, because I think a lot of programs do do some type of mentor component, but I think by addressing the nonviolence issue, you're really trying to get the heart of what happens for some of these suspensions, because it could be somehow that the students just don't know how to handle their anger or they don't right. know how to react to a situation. So, Sonia, can you talk a little bit more about your partnership with the group that's going to be working on the nonviolence training part for um, you? That would be Mr. Chuck, 
Chuck Alfin. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, they are, they are out of the Martin Luther King uh, Center for Social Non-Change Violence in Atlanta. Right. And they will be teaching us the sixth principle for nonviolence mm -hmm. that Dr. King taught back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. You know, and we're trying to follow that. So we're just trying to show them there's other ways to react to situations, you know, and handle things. You know, um, we used to, we have a nonviolent, um, Martin Luther King nonviolent group here mm -hmm. that my brother Tyrone was the president of. Oh, okay. And we used to take students to Atlanta every year and give them training in nonviolence, you know, and then they had come, they come back and they teach it in their schools. Right. So we're hoping that we can teach these kids where they can help their classmates, you know, they can start showing pride and saying, you know, hey, I go out and teach this too. Right. Right. And I think one of, the, one of the differences with this program versus your Carnahan one is this one will include young ladies because yes. unfortunately they get suspended as well. So you're not differentiating by gender. Young ladies and young men will be involved in this program. Is that correct? That is exactly. absolutely correct. Um, I know a lot of people were saying, well, how come you're using just male, male role mentors, models? Correct. But um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of male uh, figures in the school system, right. you know, uh, and uh, unfortunately, a lot of are not males in the home. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure we show a positive real, male role models in this program. Now, we are having other volunteers, you know, mm -hmm. other mentors and other leaders that will come in and talk to the group, you know, help with homework and, and things. Right. And of course, ladies will be coming okay. in. Right. We're not forgetting anyone, but I mean, it's just so important for our young men to see positive male role models out here. Well, since you've announced um, this new center, what's been the response from the community? Oh, my phone has been ringing <laughs> off the hook. Everyone wants to come and help volunteer. And, um, and I'm trying to get back to everyone. <laughs> um, it's just, it's overwhelming. It's great to, uh, to see the response, you know, that people are really, um, they're taken into this program where they want to come and help. They want, they, they're willing to give up an hour a day to come and just, you know, whatever I need. You need someone to help them with their reading, their math. And I've, yes, we do. We need whatever we can to help get these students back on the right path and get them uh, where we're trying to stop. And I know you asked me, uh, we were talking earlier, and you asked why uh, the elementary school. Correct, correct. And I was saying, um, that's because right now, everyone is focusing on those 17 and those 18 year olds that are getting in trouble, mm -hmm. you know, and we're missing a new generation. We're skipping them. You know, we're trying to stop it before they get to high school. Right, right. We want to prevent them from making those same mistakes, you know. Right. And I think so. the goal is to have a program like this so your job becomes obsolete. So we don't need a behavioral specialist mm -hmm. in the public schools because the students have gone through this program and you're not seeing those repeat um, offenders coming through. Right. And time. we also want to make sure we address the behavior before it becomes habit forming. Correct. Correct. And I think that's, you know, that's really important as well. And hopefully through the mentors, that'll be a way to be able to do that especially since it's great that you're using mentors from Carnahan, because again, these were students that could have been going to Dunbar, they went to a St. Louis public yes. elementary school, and they can see that, oh, well, they were successful, I can be successful too. Mm -hmm. Well, I just want to give you the opportunity to talk a little bit about volunteers, and you said people, your phone's ringing off the hook. What types of things would you have me do if I did volunteer? Well, what are the you, opportunities? Well, if you did come to volunteer, um, of course, like um, Marvin was saying, to help him with the homework. Because okay. we want to make sure, a lot of times when kids get suspended, they're at home, okay, they're just at home. Right. You know, they get behind in their schoolwork. Right. We want to make sure we keep them up on their schoolwork. Um, we want to make sure that we don't know what's going on with that child. Right. You know, they might just need someone to sit there and talk to them and give them that one-on-one -on -one attention. We want to make sure that we are just catering to that child and showing that child that they are special. Uh, we are here for them. You know, if they have anything to talk about, uh, it could be uh, you just serving lunch. We right. do um, have uh, Mike Shannon steak, oh, okay. and, and they are donating lunches for our so program. So those informal opportunities. Yes, it's so informal. Students. You know, we're going to sit and talk, and we just want to get them back right. and help. Right. Well, and I think, I mean, 
from an unfortunate situation, it seems like you are creating a wonderful program for children in um, the St. Louis public schools. And I know you had mentioned that you have other districts calling you. And so yeah. we are just so happy that you've decided to put this program in St. Louis public schools. And I would like to encourage all of our viewers to really check out your website. And if yes. they have skills and things they think that would be useful to your program, sure. that they give you a call or drop you an email and volunteer. That's right. Uh, just check the website uh, kwamefoundation.org okay. and or call the office 8631486253445344 and you can leave me a message i'm there every day great, <laughs> great. well thank you for joining us today thank and, you um, and i learned a lot it. about kwame foundation and what they do in the community and keep up the great work thank, thank you, you for having us thank you Thank <laughs> you.